All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this fourth video about uh, teaching method, especially English language teaching method. <clears throat> and this video is intended for the um, pioneers of the uh, English club for the business faculty in India Mandala Catholic University, Surabaya in Indonesia. Right, uh, in the previous three videos, I talked about uh, approaches or methods like audiolingual method and then uh, we also learn about community language learning the third one is about a comprehension approach through total physical response and on this fourth uh, position in the fourth position in this video i would like to explain to you about the um, the method called suggestopedia Suggestopedia is like a coinage between um, the word suggestion and the encyclopedia. How does it relate to the language learning? Well, suggestopedia deals a lot with the keyword suggestion. Suggestion. So your brain or the student's brains are suggested to, to be able to uh, be successful in learning and uh, <clears throat> the students are suggested not to feel anxious not to feel there is any period barrier between them and the success that they are to achieve right i'm going to share screen the documents that i'm talking about which is the um the gestopedia the same document uh, written by Dr. Diane uh, Larson Freeman. It's a dystopia. So there are four characteristics or features mentioned here. The first one is learning is facilitated in a pleasant, comfortable environment. So as you can see, the last three um, methods, including this one, just a lot with comfortable comfortable environment like in a comfortable learning environment so in a fun learning environment where the minimum of stress or pressure is minimized and feature number two is the more confident the students feel the better they will learn this is a strong strong emphasis on this method that the more confident the students feel the better they will learn so i also give these tips to uh sam one of the tutors that in order to be successful you have to have a good uh attitude a state in, of mind that you need to be confident that you are going to achieve the purpose that you are very good and you are you're just <clears throat> You're just you just deserve to achieve uh, uh, the the best achievement that you can get in that sense. So confidence is the key in the suggestive video. If you are confident enough that you can achieve it, you will achieve. Number three, communication takes place on two planes, on two mediums. When there is a unity between them, learning is enhanced. Two planes. What are they? What is meant by planes? We will discuss it later on. The gestopedia, the first lesson that we see on the tape on the video that Dr. Diane Larson Freeman is going to show us after this, was developed by Georgi Lozanov, who believes that in order to learn to achieve success in learning, we need to set aside the psychological barriers uh, to learning. So any barriers, any hindrance that say that you will not be able to learn or master English should be eliminated, should be minimized if possible eliminated. We fear that we will be unable to perform and that thought will limit our ability to learn. So I meet lots of students who said that, I'm sorry, sir, I couldn't speak English because I couldn't or I, I disliked English. You cannot say that. If you want to uh, 
master something. You need to like it. You need to enjoy the process. You need, and you need to, in, in, in order to achieve something, you need to give effort. And I think you cannot give your best effort in, in, if you hate that thing, you know? Am I right? So one result is that we do not use the full mental powers that we have. So as I said, we will not use full mental powers. We will not give our best efforts in that sense because we limit ourselves. I dislike it. I will not be able to achieve it. That's nonsense. We need to put it away, okay? In order to make better use of our mental reserves, the limitations we think we have need to be desuggested need to be decreased, need to be eliminated. Meanwhile, the confidence level needs to be increased, motivating statements need to be developed. So that's the difference between uh, joining a community full of positive people and joining a community that full of negative people. If you join a community with positive people, you will unconsciously or subconsciously, you will build up your uh, positive energy and you will achieve things that you want basically okay so just a video the application of the study of suggestion right to pedagogy has been developed to help students believe that they can be successful thus to help them overcome the barriers to learning they need to be suggested that they can achieve good english they need to believe that they can uh, be a good English speaker and then they will overcome the barriers to learn. Now, as you have uh, known that you're going to see the video later on, so after my video you're going to watch the uh, teaching demonstration intended by the book. So I'm going to give you the link of course to the uh, YouTube uh, video posted. Right, on the discussion, the first thing that we may notice in the demonstration on the video is that the atmosphere the teacher sought to create, yeah, the atmosphere. So to start with, if you have an English club, you need to create an atmosphere. You need to create an environment. How? By using music, posters, or perhaps plants. Uh, this morning, I heard from, from a radio talk that that plants, especially flowers, can change someone's mood into in a good way, into a positive way, into a positive thought. I think it's a very good thing that a house has plants, has has music and some posters or paintings hanging on their walls. I think that that will create a nuance of welcoming, you know, a nuance of positivity. Right? The teacher also speaks in a reassuring tone of voice. So as a teacher, this is a quality that you need to have. You need to be patient. You need to be motherly. You need to sound like your father that is wise in a very charismatic and reassuring tone. You cannot have a voice that makes them even scared of learning, you know? Like using a high tone or having a very pessimistic uh, noise, uh, pessimistic, uh, what's it, tone of your statements. It's not good. You have to have a reassuring tone of voice. You know, like, for example, you say like this, oh, you cannot do this, or oh, why cannot you do this? Well, as you know, that a simple person tense is quite simple, right? So if you have the subject I, you, we, they, you can use uh, the verb of one, and then if you have a singular noun like he, she, it, you use um, for one S. So that kind of tone, you know, reassuring tone, tone that makes you feel calm and then make you feel, oh, that's okay, that's okay. The, the, so that your students can say, that's okay, I can rely on this teacher because the teacher is capable of teaching me good things, you know. So that kind of reassuring tone that we need is encouraged in this sense. Suggesting implicitly that learning the target language will be relaxing and enjoyable, not only dynamic and exciting in a, in a, in a powerful way, but also relaxing and enjoyable in some uh, occasions, of course. 
The more confident the students feel, the better they will learn. With the words she uses, the teacher uses, she also seeks to activate the learner's imagination, which will also aid their learning. Okay, use words that can create their imagination. So I believe that good teachers are also good motivators. So if you can motivate your friends, motivate your juniors or freshmen later on in your English club, that will be a good modality for you to deliver good teaching in a sense. Next, a major step in the learning is the concert phase. Concert phase, during which the teacher acts out the reading with the musical accompaniment. On the video, there is a reading with a musical accompaniment, so like a storytelling, yeah, so that the students can enjoy the music. But uh, please remember that not all students are like this. I mean, not all students are accustomed to learning with uh, another noise around them. Me, I cannot learn if I also listen to music because I will more towards the music. I mean, uh, I will concern more on the music. Yeah, concern about the music instead of concern about the lesson that I'm studying. Okay. Okay, the steps that were completed on the video uh, suggest two planes. The one on the one, the linguistic message on the one side, the narrative is encoded. So encoded is delivered, encoded and decoded. I think the, the communication, I think that's quite simple. You decode a message, you encode a message, that's different. Okay, that's different. If you decode, there's a code and you read it, you decode it. If you encode the message that you want to deliver, you convey it through your speech, through your writing, it means you encode, you do the encoding. On the other uh, factors which complement the linguistic message, the teacher's actions and the music and the music. So the planes are the linguistic message and the enjoyable environment. I think, in my opinion, the posters, the the lighting, the decoration needs to be adjusted in the sense that uh, it's another plane that can help the linguistic message to be delivered. When there's a unity between the two planes, learning is enhanced. Well, it's like learning English in a library and learning English in a in a marketplace, you know, noisy place and a quiet place that supports learning. Of course, they are different. Okay. A pseudo passive state, such as the state one experiences when listening to a concert, is ideal for overcoming psychological barriers and for taking advantage of learning potential. It says here that if someone goes uh, listening to a concert, it goes to a musical concert, for example, I mean, I believe that there is a minimum psychological barriers there because. You focus on being happy, you know, you enjoy the music, you dance with the music, you dance with the people around you, you know, and, you know, that kind of vibe that helps learning is encouraged in this Suggestopedia method. Okay, with the last paragraph that we're reading now, the material the students are learning needs to be activated as well, however. The material, remember, in teaching, you need to use authentic materials. What are authentic materials? There's a long discussion about authentic materials. Authentic materials is the materials that are intended to achieve the objectives. If the objective is to make your friends or members of your club to, uh, <clears throat> to be able to listen to announcements well, so the materials for listening should be announcements or report, or if you want to improve in a general sense, you can give them uh, materials like a radio, for example, radio or audio from, from podcast, for example, that is not made uh, in a different setting, you know? So basically the material should be suggested with the actual use of the language or the actual use, actual objectives of the learning. 
Okay, the means, the tool of the tools of doing this should be varied so as to avoid as much repetition as possible. There is an increasing trend that repetition from audio lingual method, uh, community language learning, can, comprehension approach, and now it's just a period that repetition is beginning to fade. That repetition no longer is no longer relevant in this case. Dramatization is one way of doing this, and the particular particularly valuable way of playfully activating the material. As I told you, I usually, well, that's, I think that I'm a natural teacher. I think I use hand gesture, I use tones, very variety of tones, variations of, of uh, complexions, expressions, that really helps in learning. Dramatization. Fantasy reduces barriers to learning. Fantasy. Your tutors need to be uh, smart in, uh, in inducing fantasies. How to induce fantasies? Tell stories. Tell stories. If you like to tell stories in a, in a good storyteller, you're, uh, you're a uh, natural teacher, just like me. Other means, other tools of activating the material used by the teacher were the game with the ball. That's an example. So if you want to play with the ball, so, okay, Alex, catch the ball, okay? After Alex catches the ball, he needs to uh, give an example in English, an example of a sentence in English, for example. Uh, Alex says, uh, I usually take, uh, take a shower at 6 in the morning, and then Alex throws the ball to B, say Brian. Brian says, uh, after taking shower, I, go, uh, I prepare myself at 6.30. Brian throws the ball to C, to uh, Cheryl, Cheryl, for example, and Cheryl says, you know, rows of sentences, chains of sentences can be created, can be created there using the activity. Yeah, can be the ball or dictation. Yeah, so the teacher can dictate some sentences and ask the students or the friends to uh, write down what the speaker says or the teacher says. The game helped to create a playful atmosphere, thus indirectly suggesting that learning can be fun. Fun learning, so just to be the end, but fun learning. But of course, uh, before it is too late, I would like to say that these methods sometimes blend into mixed method, mixed teaching method. That's because, as I mentioned earlier in the first video, that there is no such kind of method that is best of all, that is, uh, that stands alone without the uh, influence or without the parts of other methods uh, being put in the method. So. So basically the best method is to mix methods that suitable to your characters as tutors and the characters of your students or your English club members. All right, uh, that's from me about suggested video or the fourth pitching method that we can use to, uh, to teach. I'm Andreas, thank you so much for joining me. There are two more videos about teaching methods, so stay tuned.